Today is so overdue. I normally like to go through my sand planter that has all of my yarn tags from all the yarn that I've used for the entire month. I like to do it at the end of every month. This way I can see if there was a particular brand of yarn that I like. Maybe there was some indie yarn that I really, really enjoyed and I have a project started but I just kind of forgot about it and I might need to order more before it goes out. For whatever reason, I have not touched this since the end of October last year. I'm just gonna blame it on the fact that October, we had Halloween, I was a little distracted, and then we rolled right into Hexmas, and we have the New Year's, and here we are at the end of January, so. But I have some time today, so we're gonna go through all this. First though, I am gonna make a warm beverage, and I'm continuing on my journey of exploring tea this year, though I did go back to brutality. Like, it's just so perfect, tea blends inspired by horror movies. There's just so many unique blends there. So this will be my second one that I'm trying from them. And we have Cherifier. The label in and of itself, it's simply everything. So based off of the movie Terrifier, this movie to me is an absolute must watch for Halloween. Though if you do not like gore, move on, it's fine, you don't need to watch it. Either Halloween day or the week of Halloween. It just has total spooky vibes for me. So let's see what is all in here. Black tea, freeze dried cherries, orange peels, natural cherry cola. Okay, that is interesting to me. I don't know what to think about that yet. Orange, peach flavors, peach pieces, apple pieces, marigold flowers. There's a lot going on that I would never think to put together. But then again, this is just the beginning of my tea journey. So then it does give me instructions of how to actually make the tea, which is another thing that I'm loving about this company. It's not just, here's the tea, it's fantastic, try it. Let's see what this looks like. Ooh, it's really dark. And those big pieces in there, I'm just gonna spill it everywhere. But like, oh, that is so cool. It smells like cherry cola. Like that's the very first thing that hits me. That is bizarre. really shook by how much this smells like cherry cola. Uh, nope, it's still too hot. Nope, I'm gonna let it sit for a second. Let's get into the yarn tags first. Right on the top here, Davina Yarn by Hobie. This is officially a must have in the yarn dungeon. It is 65% alpaca, 10% wool, very, very easy to work with. I would highly suggest this for any beginners. It is a number four medium weight, but I used, I think a six, all the way up to an eight millimeter because I made a cardigan and my mood snood with this. Let me grab one of them. I only have a couple of these left, but 100% I'm making a new order. And so you can see that the yarn is just very tightly wound. It's not gonna, you know, get caught on your hook, which is very annoying when you're starting in crochet. That's why I'm saying check this out if you haven't. It was on sale for the longest time. I think in November all the way through December, the entire line was on sale. They have quite a few different colors. Colors. I only have black and white, but this has been used for my Wednesday Adams series of like clothing that I've been making. Honestly, can't get enough of it. Let's try, let's see now. So I smell the cherry cola. It's very mild, but the tea is actually very relaxing. Okay, well, I like it. Lion Brand Basic Stitch Anti-Pilling Yarn. This stuff will always be in my sand planter. It doesn't matter what time of year it is, what month, like does not matter. It's my go-to yarn for gift giving because this is really, really easy to take care of. So if there's people that I'm gifting things like hats, mittens, scarf to, and maybe I know that they don't want to like hand wash or even lay flat to dry, this is what I'm gonna go for because throw it in the wash, throw it in the dry, 
dryer. It's gonna come out, it's gonna look gorgeous. I'm sure I'm gonna find more of this. Again, gift giving season was a couple of months ago. So I'm gonna end up with a lot of this. This is a new to me brand, but this has been out there for quite a while. I'm using the vintage Chunky for a cardigan right at this moment. Again, it's another piece for my Wednesday Adams inspired wardrobe. I'm doing a cardigan with this and then also I'm doing a long sleeve shirt with not the chunky, but the the worsted weight. Oh, this is all chunky. Yeah, see, I've like gone through a lot of it. Again, this is gonna be a staple for me because you can throw it in the wash. Lay flat to dry because there is 40% wool in here. 52% is acrylic. I've already thrown one piece in the wash just to see kind of how it holds up. It comes out looking exactly the way that it went in. For day-to-day -day pieces like cardigans for me, um, yes, I'm definitely gonna get more. There are a lot of different colors that it comes in, but but right now I only have the black and the white for obvious reasons. I think I like it a little bit better now that it's cooled down some. <laughs> like I can taste a little bit more of the flavor combos. Impeccable yarns, another one that I just have all the time. I use this for beanies. Um, Sunny Day, no, this was for my Coraline cardigan. Bright yellow impeccable yarn and I did a moss stitch with it. Another one that's really good for beginners because it just works with you, not against you, and you can throw it in the wash. Can you throw it in the dryer? It says tumble dry low. It's 100% acrylic. I guess I don't know why you couldn't. The Karen Spice Cake. I have a lot of these. I need to pull these out because not only did I use this in October for our crochet along, the wolf tooth blanket, but I ended up making a couple of blankets as gifts as well. So I went through a ton of this. The one thing that I don't really enjoy about yarn Yarnspirations is that they often have limited time only yarn. You have to know like what you wanna make, how much yarn you need, or just like get a bunch of it all at once and hope that it's enough for the project that you want in the near future. There was one blanket that I wanted to add one more skein of yarn to, but the limited time had come and gone. Couldn't find any more of this. And this was the Ginger Snap, which I loved this color. There was another one too. I'm sure I'll be able to find it but it was like a gray gradient color. I really enjoyed that. Surprisingly, I liked working with it too. The yarn in and of itself is, sometimes I love it, sometimes I don't, but this was really, really fun to work up a blanket with. Silver Steel, okay, so that was that one. Silver Steel and then Ginger Snap. If they had this around, I definitely would get more of it, but again, it was limited time only. The Spinning Spider, which is called Trick or Treat Sparkle, it was a really, pretty witchy purple on the outside to a trick-or-treat orange on the inside. I ended up making a quick little wrap that I gifted away during October. It was super fun to work with and the sparkle was like intensely blinding. The human that I gave it to absolutely loved it. Bee Woolen is a local yarn shop near me that I just recently found in October. They have a really fun setup for you to go and crochet or knit, loom, weave, like all the things there. There's a big open space and there's this nice fireplace going and then obviously there's a shop in the front. You can go through and look at all of the beautiful yarn. This one I think I ended up making, it was like a scarf on my Addy machine, which I ended up gifting it because the color wasn't quite exactly what I would wear every day, but I knew that going into it. I just wanted to try it. This was their color that was, yeah, artist dyed exclusively for Be Woolen. It was a really pretty mermaid blue, had some greens in it. The person that I gave it to really loved it and it went with like their winter outfits. I know we've just started, but I hope that you also have a warm beverage because <laughs> I feel like I haven't even made a dent yet. All right, what's next? We have Wander Acrylic Yarn, another one that is a staple here in the Yarn Dungeon. I use it all the time. I can tell you what I use this exactly for because I use it for things, again, Beanie, scarves, hat, cardigans, blankets, literally everything. It's 100% acrylic. This one is patina, so it probably was for October. 100% acrylic, worsted weights. It's just another one that's really good when I am 
experimenting with patterns. I'll bust this yarn out to kind of play around with it and then decide the color that I want later. I have an entire wall full of this yarn, so that's not going anywhere anytime soon. This is something that I used to make a blanket, actually for my Friday the 13th blanket, which is not anywhere near being done yet, but when it's done, it's gonna be delightful. Obviously, anything anti-pilling is gonna be perfect for blankets. A lot of wear and tear, a lot of use. It's gonna be a movie blanket, so even more use because I watch movies every single day. I don't know what it is about this particular line of Big Twist, but I this is my favorite of theirs so far. It is really, really, really soft. Honestly, I've just been enjoying working it up. The Joann's that are around me, they seem to be out of this, like out of a lot of the colors, and also online, they're out of it too. So I don't know if this is something that's brand new, they're like trying it out, they don't have a ton of it yet, but if that's the case, I hope that they bring back more in stock and they keep this in stock or like keep this as their normal cycle of yarn that they have. This is discontinued sock yarn from Premier Yarns and I really wish that they wouldn't have been discontinued. Universal Yarns, that's what it is. But that was the other name of the actual colorway of the yarn. The stuff is so nice and it's wool free. I don't seem to have a problem using wool, but there are people out there that can't use wool. They're allergic to it for whatever reason. That just seems to be the go-to for sock yarn. So it's always really fun when I find these options. Premier Yarn seems to be really good with that though, because they have a summer like fruit line of sock yarn that is also wool free. So maybe they're hearing the customers say, hey, we would like options, not just wool. Yeah, you can machine wash and tumble dry. That's the other thing that's really cool. You don't have to hand wash socks. More Davina. Muse 2320. What do we have here? Oh, the Baby Surrey Alpaca. So this was part of the 12 Nights of Krampus countdown. I made uh, two different cowls and it, two pairs of fingerless mitts because there was a Krampus countdown and then there was a over the river countdown. This yarn was incredible. If you take anything away from today, Muse 2320, if you're looking for some really fun hand dyed yarn and you're wanting to do a countdown of some sort, Muse 2320 does it really, really well. There were stitch markers in it and they were Krampus themed. I have a ton of them now because they were from Crafty Like a Monkey and they actually had it on their site afterwards. So I got a whole package of them. I'm ready to go for Hexmas next year. Each one is hand stamped. They are totally customizable and they have the lobster clasp, but there's options too. So you can get this or you can get the ones for knitting, so just like the O-ring on it. Makes of skeins, what did I use? Oh my gosh, okay, this is going way back. So like the beginning of October, Mace of Skeins dropped her incredible Halloween line. This is the Spade DK Weight in Pumpkin Spice. If you've never checked it out, go to Mace of Skeins, check out the yarn. There's some really, really cool stuff and it changes all the time. So again, you have to be like on it and know when everything is coming out. Follow her on Instagram, everywhere here on her channel. Yeah, this one was particularly for my mother though. I got that one and then I think there was another one in here it was like a purple and my mama loves purple yarn and loves macy so i was like absolutely made some fingerless mitts with it i don't know i can't find it oh here's another one book of spells that's what it was called this one oh my gosh if i could go back in time and buy out all of the book of spells i would do that Wims Moreno Z Twist. This one's gonna make me sad because it's one of my like staples that I've had in the yarn dungeon for a couple years now and it's being discontinued. I use this for so many different things but it's really good for beginners and also for making cardigans because I could just go so quickly with it. It's twisted in a way that when you're using your crochet hook, it won't get caught on it. A unique twist of this yarn makes it optimal for your stitches and it does. Like I can go so quick 
using this. And I think I have, what, gray? Light gray, yeah. 50% superwash merino wool, 50% nylon. I don't know why it's being discontinued. I mean, the Wander Yarn 100% acrylic is really, really popular. So maybe this one was just like not holding up. I don't know, I'm not on their marketing team. However, if you've never tried it and you're interested, good news, it's on sale right now. There is the charcoal and light gray are my two favorite that I have. I have quite a bit of it left over. Actually, I think I have enough to make probably five or six cardigans, to be honest. So I'll be good for a little bit. Arcane Fiber Works. Just tried during December. I made a cardigan, which is right here. I can't even express how soft this is. Like seriously, I wear this all the time. Like I genuinely do. I'm gonna throw it on right now. I just washed it the other day. Now it's dried, we're all good. I made this one in particular for the premiere of Violent Nights. I didn't get it finished quite in time for Violent Nights, but I still wore it all throughout December. Worsted weight, 100% merino. It is beautiful. And this brand in particular has so many gorgeous yarns. They had a Jack and Sally one. I'm not sure if it's still on there anymore. It was gorgeous, like Nightmare Before Christmas yarn. Yes, absolutely. And it's hand dyed yarn that the colors change up often, not only just with the season, but just like whenever they're feeling inspiration. They'll have the picture that the inspiration came from next to the yarn, which is seriously so cool. Tons and tons of this Mega Ball from Hobie. Yeah, here's another one. This is the 100% acrylic. I ended up making a couple of big blankets to gift away this year. This is yarn that gives gets softer as time goes by and the more you wash it, dry it, that type of deal. It's a really, really good value, which is obviously why I chose it to make the blankets that I did. Hand wash a blanket. I would never do that to someone unless I specifically knew that they like, they loved this artist, they loved the yarn that they create. Um, yeah, there's no way I would do that otherwise. Full Ease Thick and Quick from Lion Brands. Another one that I have on hand, especially during the holiday season. It's in the name, Thick and Quick, Last Minute Gifts. This is awesome. Next, we have a ton of Hobie holiday yarn. I'm not gonna go through every one of them because they were all very similar and I used them for lots and lots of beanies. It was called the Horizon Christmas Yarn and this stuff was really, really soft. Like, I don't know what I expected from it, but it was incredibly soft. I made a couple of cardigans to gift. It's anti-pilling again, so it's really good for giving away. A light number three. The colors were obviously very holiday color, very holiday peppermint swirl type of colors. So not what I normally go for, but again, for gift giving, it was perfect. Another brand that is not new in any way, shape or form, but new to me. I tried some of their, I think this is just like basic. Their was a black and a white. I ended up making some fingerless mitts from it. 75% superwash merino wool, 25% nylon. I also did take a dye your own yarn class which used this yarn. It was like a solar dyeing yarn. I'd like to try it again. All my color was kind of like at the bottom, so the skein of yarn was still pretty, it was like white with a little bit of red splatter on the bottom. So I guess it would be kind of cool caking it all up. I don't know, I saved it to try to re-dye it again. Honey Bunny, we just talked about this. In one of my recent videos, I made a crop top cardigan. Butter, I guess, not cardigan. I will definitely be getting more of this. It's big, thick, chunky yarn, bulky number six. I liked it a lot more than I was expecting to. Kind Feather, this is another must have in the yarn dungeon. I use this stuff year round, but I really enjoy using it in the spring and summertime. 100% premium acrylic anti-pilling. It's great for things like crop tops and shorts, things that are gonna, you know, like take to the beach and stuff like that, a cover up. Since it is a, a lightweight, yeah, a light number three, there's a huge range of hooks that I can use with this and it's still happy. I've decided that I like this. It's official, this is my second cup. So I feel like that's, that's pretty good, right? I'm having a little trouble with this stuff and I don't know if I'm gonna keep making my pattern that I have because it's this with this alpaca silk. I'm making a leg warmer and it's just not coming together the way that I want it to. By themselves I think they're really really beautiful yarns 
super gorgeous. Obviously, this one's incredibly soft. For now, this stuff is on hold, but this alpaca is ridiculous. I need to find something different for this. 50% alpaca, 50% silk. The softest yarn ever, like literally ever. I have to find some other pattern to create with it. For now, I'm leaving this to the side. I'm not gonna be purchasing anymore. I have like three hanks of it. It's already caked up, so I just need to work with it a little bit more, I think. Yarn that came in the mushroom knitting machine. I got a couple of those. This one was super fun. So Muse2320 does these things called sock tails. She basically takes a cocktail, breaks down the colors and makes that into a yarn. And this one was a Negroni. So freaking great. I have both of the socks done. I just have to block them. Here's one that I actually will not be getting like ever again in my entire life. The Eco Naturals, it was limited edition. So I don't even know if it's out anymore, but this was from Loops and Threads. It's the made from recycled plastic. The yarn was, it was pretty, but I couldn't get past the sound that it made. It was a squeaky noise. I tried it with many different types of crochet hooks. It just, I don't know. For me, it was a no. Booby Halloween yarn. If ever you see this on their site, snag some. They actually still have a couple of their lines on their site still. So this is the Universe Halloween XL. It is a little bit thinner. So it's a light number three. So it's really good for lightweight cardigans. I mean, honestly, anything. This was some cool stuff. Katia yarn. And it is called, what is the color of it again? Oh no, does it not say? No, it just says color 58, but it looked like a pumpkin mocha. Real rich brown all the way to black and then real intense pumpkin, like burnt pumpkin almost. Made a cowl out of this during October, freaking love it. And now I can't find this color ever again. So there's that. The Premier anti-pilling everyday bobbin. I just saved the top of the bobbin. This is stuff that is again being discontinued. Wow, we had quite the end of the year here for discontinued yarn. I loved this stuff. A medium number four, 100% anti-pilling acrylic yarn and it came a cool looking little bobbin. They have the anti-pilling everyday yarn on their site still. That did not get discontinued just the way they packaged it did. But for me, that was like 90% of the fun. Sweet Roll Vivid by Premier. This stuff is neon intense. The actual name of it is called Neon Sign and it glows under UV light. This was so freaking cool. I have a couple left over. I don't know what I'm gonna do with them because they're cakes that like do the gradient color. I think I would like them more if they were just one solid color, which they do have some of that on their site, but it's really, really soft, 100% acrylic. I enjoyed working with it. Things like scarves and mittens, but cardigans, I don't think I would use it for that, not because of how soft it is. I just like to control the color a little bit. So that's a totally me thing. This is the Hobie cotton yarn. I've been finding this to be fantastic for armagaroo so like little stuffies. Basically, whenever this goes on sale, I add it into my cart and it goes on like ridiculous sale. So like this thing will be a dollar or like less than a dollar sometimes. So watch out for that on Hobie. Line Brands DIY Glow Yarn, which I like to stock up anytime I find this at Joanne or even on their site. Often it sells out on their site a lot sooner than at Joanne. It's a number four medium weight and it is a little bit expensive for the amount that you get, which is 50 grams. But again, it's glow in the dark yarn. I don't know, it works really well. So I always stock up on it. Plus there are coupons all the time for Joanne. So whenever I see this coming out, order ahead of time, pick up in store, 20% off right away. Charisma yarn, what did I use this for? color is dragonfly. Okay, this is the stuff that looks like Beetlejuice colors. I did actually make a scarf just right at the beginning of October. It was just like an unusually cold day and I had a couple of these left. I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna make a Beetlejuice scarf. Why not? I think this was gifted to me because this isn't something that I have in the yarn dungeon. And this was called Grand Canyon. So I, I don't even know what that color would look like. It probably ended up being made into like a beanie on my adding machine and then gifted away. So not a staple in the yarn dungeon. We are getting to the bottom now. 
I see some more Macy. This is the one that I was like, yes, I will buy all of this. So the book is spelled, that was gorgeous. Don't get me wrong, absolutely beautiful. The raven's feather was like an iridescent type of color that changed depending on the lighting that you were in. All this stuff was so beautiful. And I ended up making fingerless mitts, gifting it away. And I really wish that I hadn't. Not often that I say that, but I wish that I would have kept it for myself because it was so freaking pretty. Cotton King, this is another yarn from Hobie that I've been using for Amigurumi's. The Muse 2320, all of the Hocus Pocus yarn that came out in October. That line I'm gonna miss. Even though I ordered multiples of, I wish that I had ordered more, like I really do. Uh, also, we have some rhubarb and pumpkin, and this is in the sock yarn as well. I just went through a phase of making socks. I feel like I'm kind of coming out of that now. Like when September hit last year, I was crochet socks like all day, every day. I was even stopping with my cardigan making in order to have time to make socks, but I feel like I'm, yeah, I'm coming around now back to cardigans. This one was in nutmeg. Then we have Winifred, and then this was the Sanderson sister trio that had the black flame candle with it too. And it says Kayla special on there. I might actually have to save this one because that's adorable. <laughs> if you are still with me, cheers. You made it all the way to the end. The empty videos are not normally this long and February's will definitely be a little bit better because now it's all out. The Sam head is officially clean, ready to go. Fresh, start over for a new month. Take away which ones do I absolutely have to have in the Yarn Dungeon. I'm not gonna go through any of the limited edition ones. Those ones I mean, they're leaving. Wander, 100% acrylic, loops and threads. The big twist, living, if it's not gonna be a limited edition, that will be a part of the yarn dungeon. Use 2320 and Mesa skeins, always. Even though the colorway changes, I always go back to these shops, so absolutely. And Arcane Fibers. And then, as always, Hobie Yarn. Not the limited edition stuff, but just Hobie Yarn, Kind Feather. There you go. All right, ghouls, that is officially it today. I hope you had fun in the Yarn Dungeon checking out some of my empties for the past couple of months. Let me know, though, what was your go-to yarn for just the month of January? What was a yarn that either you've used constantly, you absolutely have to have it, or a new yarn? that you found that you're like, hey, this is gonna be a part of my yarn dungeon now. It's fantastic. The Ghoul Squad must know about this. Otherwise, that is it. So cheers, have a fantastically spooky rest of your evening, and I will see you in my next video.